Hi, this is a quick look inside the Kugelfischer mechanical injection pump, the type fitted to the 2002 TII. I'm going to refer to that blue booklet from BMW North America. It's quite a good description of how these things work. Uh, the pump is driven at half engine speed uh, and its internals respond to uh, engine speed and throttle position. That's the throttle lever on the other side. Uh, and the throttle lever in that position is the full throttle and uh, pulling it forward, that's the idle position. On the back of the pump is a, is a cold start enrichment device and this lever is the enrichment lever. Uh, that's thermostatically controlled, we'll come to that later. Uh, and in the centre of the picture here, with the yellow mark, that's the famous verboten screw. So when that meets a stop, when the engine's warmed up, that controls your full throttle mixture. It's a little mini pump, a little, little mini engine. Uh, and on the back of it, it's got a, uh, a speed control device that uh, twists a cone inside the, uh, inside the pump. So the speed control is basically similar to a a small speedometer. Uh, so it's got a, a magnet driven uh, drive. That spring resists the turning of the magnet uh, uh, to a certain degree and that's transmitted by gears to the cone. So the cone moves through about 270 degrees depending on engine speed. Uh, that, this is a key part of calibration. Getting this spring in the right tension is a key part of calibration. Uh, the head is the main part. Uh, it's got four plungers, which are the actual um, pistons delivering the, the fuel. Uh, they're just spring loaded and they go up and down. Their position, their, their full stroke position is controlled by a plate in the pump, which is key to the operation later. And then the fuel is pumped through that head. This is the delivery valve, which is a one-way outlet valve to the injector. And then under this cover is a suction valve. That's a one-way inlet valve to fill the little cylinder with fuel. So that's a suction valve. The head itself is just a simple thing with a few drillings, those two valves and one little piston per cylinder. You can pull the piston out and then just look right through. So it's just a, a plain hole. It's precision, of course. There's no seals there. That's just metal to metal contact. So uh, they need to be in good condition. Normally, if a pump fails in old age to lack of use, it's those pistons sticking. So that goes on top of the pump. That little spring bears up against this plate. And this plate is critical in controlling the full stroke of those uh, little pistons, and that controls the, f the fueling versus speed and throttle position. You can see they rest on little tappets inside. We can look at them closer later. So at the base of the pump, there's a camshaft, and here's a pump with the cone removed and the plate up out the way, and you can see the camshaft. As I turn the pump, you can see the camshaft turning, and you can see the little tappets going up and down in response to the cam movement. And this plate is key in controlling how those little spring-loaded pistons fall back. You can see that the external mixture arm it, that plate's on an eccentric, and you can see that controls the height of the plate. And the other side of that plate has the cone underneath, you'll see in a moment. So you can see the height of the plate is controlled by two things, the position of the enrichment lever, and later you'll see the position of the plate bearing against the cone. And that's what the cone looks like. So the clone, cone slides along and rotates through 270 degrees. It's an odd-shaped thing. Uh, and that's basically the fuel map. So that is a mechanical fuel map which has been customized for the engine in question. 
there's a section which is not used, only about 270 degrees is used. So that part is used and there's a part which is unused. It doesn't spin round, it just rotates through 270 degrees in operation. So here's the pump with the cone inside and you can see that plate and that stub on the plate bears on that cone and that cone rotates in response to engine speed by that spring loaded mechanism on the back. And with throttle position by sliding backwards and forwards. So that's on the keyed shaft. So it's sliding backwards and forwards in response to throttle position and turning round in response to uh, engine speed. You can see as I move the cone, the plate goes up and down. So the plate goes up and down for two reasons cone position and also enrichment lever position. The way the throttle lever works, it just runs through the base of the, of the body and it's got a, a, um, a piece on the end which just goes into that groove on the cone. And so you can see very simply how the cone moves backwards and forwards depending on throttle position. That's all the throttle lever does, move that cone up and down. The interesting thing is that that cam is actually hollow and inside the cam is a magnetic drive. So this is really like a speedometer. So th this part has got bearings both ends and spins and three wheels and it's a magnet. So as the cam rotates, that magnet gets drawn round, same like a speedometer head uh, and that turns the gear against the spring pressure and turns the the cone position. You can see I'm holding the gear still and turning the cam. It's just magnetic force. So again, that's the back of the pump with the with the gears and the spring which resists the um, the turning of the, the magnet. And that's key part of calibration setting that up. As I said, it's like a speedometer very much the same, so the spring is the same as the spring. When you take top off, just be careful. There's little rotating pins, they will fall out. One of these is loose in this case. On the back of the pump is the enrichment device. That's basically a thermostatically controlled. Uh, it, it moves the top hat washer to adjust the enrichment, and there's a cone to allow additional air into the engine for um, slow running. Inside the uh, warm-up unit, uh, it's just it's just a tube which has got water connected at the bottom. There's a wax thermostat which goes inside, and then there's an O-ring which is missing here. Then a flat washer, and then a simple spacer, which only goes in one way around. And then there's the uh, the air cone assembly, which has got some slotted slight, uh, points on the sides, you can see there, uh, which is, that's the top of the unit. You can see how that adjusts airflow. And there's a big spring pushing that down against the uh, wax thermostat below. And that just all screws into the case with, with that, uh, that screw on top. So here's a TIR install uh, responding to engine speed and throttle position. This is a turbo responding to throttle position and manifold pressure with that device on the back of the pump you can see there. And this is an F1 engine. I think it's a Benetton F1 engine. You see the same pump. Now it's got a, a servo driver on the back. So it's now computer controlled but mechanical injection.